OK, so we're going to look at a neat little exercise to do with interior and boundary points of convex sets in R2. So we're just working in 2D Euclidean space here. We'll start off just with some definitions. So we'll do the definitions of interior, exterior and boundary points specific for 2D Euclidean space. So you can say you've got an interior point of a set if there's always some ball that you can draw or a circle you can draw around that point with a small enough radius so that all of the points in that circle are contained within your set. And similarly, an exterior point is one that it won't belong to the set, but you can always draw a ball around it or a circle with a small enough radius, all of the points of which don't belong to your set. And finally, a boundary point is one where however small you take the radius of your circle, any ball or circle that you draw around your point will contain some interior and some exterior points. So here interior points will belong to your set, exterior points won't belong to your set, but actually boundary points can be within or not within your set. So for example, if you've got a circle and you include the circumference, then the points on the circumference belong to the set and also lie on the boundary. But you could have all the points in a circle not counting its circumference, but then a point on the circumference would count as being on the boundary there. So boundary points don't necessarily have to belong to your set you're interested in. So finally, the definition of a convex set is that for every two points that belong to your set, if you consider the line segment joining those two points, this is always contained within your set. So here we've got a non-example where the line segment joining these two points isn't entirely contained within our set. So this set isn't convex. So this captures this idea of having an indent or having a hole in your set. So the actual exercise that we're going to be interested in is to do with interior and boundary points of a convex set. So in particular, all the different pairings, say you have an interior and a boundary point, then we consider the line segment between those two points. Can the points on that line segment be interior points? Can they be boundary points, etc.? So our first case is where, let's say we've got A and B are interior points of a convex set. So the claim here is that if A and B are both interior points of a convex set, then actually every point on the line segment in between them, so we'll say AB is the line segment between them, every point on this line segment is also an interior point. So just with the shorthand, we'll say that two interior points implies that the line segment joining them is also made up of entirely interior points. And we can just picture this, that if you've got a point on the inside of your set and another one on the inside of your set, as long as it's a convex set, all of these points should also be interior. It wouldn't make sense for any of these to be on the boundary. Whereas we could have a look at a non-example where we've got a non-convex set. So let's imagine we've got an interior point here and an interior point here. We could get a boundary point on this line segment connecting them, or Considering this example here, we could have some boundary and even some exterior points on our line segment connecting those two points. So just to see a proof for this, we can imagine we've got our two interior points of our convex set A and B. So they're interior points, so let's just label them as A and B. So this means that there is some ball or some circle of a certain radius which belongs entirely to our set that we're interested in this convex set. So we can draw a circle of a certain size around A, and we can draw another circle of a certain size around B. And all of the points within each of these circles belong to our convex set. So now we can use the definition of a convex set to help us, because we could take, let's say, a point here on the circle and another point here on this circle. These two points belong to our convex set. And just by definition, then, all of this line segment between these points also belongs to our convex set. We can do the same thing on the bottom as well here. We can connect with this line segment to find more points which belong to our convex set. So we've got now everything on this line segment here, all of this circle, this line segment, and the first circle over here, all of this belongs to our convex set. And similarly, you could take a point here and a point here, show that everything in between them lies in our convex set. So actually everything inside this red figure we've got here belongs to our convex set. So now it's not too difficult to see that any point on this line, because it belongs to, it's inside this red shape, any circle, we can, we can draw a small enough circle there which is going to be entirely contained 
within our set. So all the points within this circle belong to our set because they're a subset, they, they're contained within this red shape, which is all contained within our convex set. So this is the same as saying that every point on this line segment is an interior point. So we've shown then that if we've got two interior points of our convex set, then every point on this line segment between them is also an interior point because it belongs to a small enough circle which will be contained within this larger figure. Now let's consider the case where A is interior and B is a boundary point which belongs to our convex set. So here we're claiming that all of the points between A and B still have to be interior points of our convex set. And we can imagine this just intuitively with our image of a convex set. Everything between your boundary point and your interior point there is going to be interior, whereas with our non-example you can have a point on the boundary, you can have an interior point, but you could get a boundary point in between them, or we could even get some exterior points and multiple boundary points between our interior and boundary points if we have a non-convex set. So this really is a property of convex sets. So to prove this we can apply a similar sort of argument as before. If we imagine we've got A as an interior point of our set and B belongs to our set, then we can draw a ball of a certain radius so we can have a circle around A, all of which belongs to our set. And because all of these points belong to our set and because B belongs to our set, we can draw tangents out to join this circle here. So actually all of this shape now, including the point B, is contained within our set. So now you can see just like before that if we take a point on the line segment connecting the A and B we can draw a small enough circle this will be contained within our set. We just need to be a little bit careful around the point B. So we know that B itself is a boundary point and we're trying to show that everything in between A and B is interior. So if we zoom in a little bit let's imagine we're a bit closer to B any point that's actually on this line segment that's not the point B is some distance away, so it could be some distance epsilon here. And you can just see visually, because we've got a ball of a certain radius here, these lines won't coincide with the line segment connecting A and B. So you can see that there will always be some space around this point, so we could draw a very small circle around this point on AB, even if it's really, really close to the point B. So we can see there, just like in the case where we've got A and B are interior points, if A is interior and B is a boundary point which belongs to our set, then actually we can say that every single point on the line segment between them is an interior point of our convex set. Now our final part of the exercise is to consider the case where A and B are both boundary points which belong to this convex set. So there are two possible outcomes here. So first of all you can have all of the line segment between A and B is contained on the boundary, so they're all boundary points. And we can imagine if you've got A and B are on the boundary, then the line segment between them on the boundary is also a straight line, then every point between A and B is a boundary point. We can also have all the points between A and B are interior, so this picture is more familiar where We've got A and B on the boundary of our convex set, and you can see that every point on the line segment between A and B is going to be an interior point of this convex set. So to prove that these are the only two possible outcomes, we'll first consider the case, let's say there are no interior points on A, B, on the line segment between A and B. Well, we know that there aren't going to be any exterior points on this line segment between A and B, because A and B belong to our convex set, and we know that this line segment between A and B is contained within our convex set. So if we've not got any interior points, they must all be boundary points in order for them to belong to this set. So in this case where there's no interior points on our line segment, we're done at this point, we can just say that they're all boundary points and the theorem is satisfied. So now let's consider the case where there's at least one interior point between A and B. So let's call this interior point, we'll call it M, and we'll just draw this on our picture here. So this is an interior point of our convex set. So you know that there's some ball of a certain radius. We can draw a circle around M, which is entirely contained within our set. So we could argue geometrically like before. So we know that B and this circle are contained within our set, which is convex. So we can draw some tangents here and we get a shape 
all of which is contained within our convex set. But we could actually do this a little bit more quickly by using part two of the exercise. So we know that everything between A and M, because A is a boundary point and M is an interior point, this is the case from part two. So AM, this is entirely made up of interior points now, because everything between an interior point and a boundary point we know has to be an interior point. We know the point M itself is interior just by assumption, and similarly with M and B, we've got an interior point and a boundary point, so we know that everything between M and B, the line segment joining M to B, is also made up of interior points. So you can conclude in this case, if there is at least one interior point, then actually everything on this line segment between A and B has got to be made up of interior points. So we've concluded then, we've covered all the three different possible cases where A and B belong to our convex set. If A and B are both interior points, then everything between them on this line segment has to be an interior point. If you've got one interior and one boundary point, then still everything between them has to be an interior point. But in the third case, if A and B are both boundary points, there are two possible outcomes. Either everything is a boundary point or everything on the line segment is an interior point.